today's abandoned video, we come across hundreds of abandoned vehicles located in a field in rural Ireland. Once a private collection surrounded by mystery, the graveyard has been forgotten for years, with the many buses and more in irreparable condition until recently when the entire site started to be scrapped. Join us for the last chance to see the apocalyptic scene before it is no more. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. On our summer trip to Ireland in 2022, there was one location that we were quite curious to reach because we hadn't heard much about it. During one evening, we trekked towards it, confident we had the right pinpoint after sighting the mass of vehicles on satellite imagery. Just made it to this bus graveyard. A lot of them have gone, but there's more than enough here to check out. There's a few cameras on the site, so you need to be quite careful. Um, they have good coverage though, they're all in the air, um, on big poles, looking over everything. So we may just have to ignore them. That's how the locals have had their fun with them. Most of the windows are smashed. And the scrappers as well have come. I think I can get in this one. Looks like a coach. So much glass on the ground. seats remaining. So many different types and I'm assuming all the architecture inside will be different. This one's easily accessible. Nice welcome aboard sign there. Wow. They are destroyed. This one's actually in quite good condition apart from the windows. All the seats still intact. It was a very bizarre but atmospheric setting. We tend not to visit too many abandoned motor graveyards, yet this one had caught our eye. You could see that many of the buses hadn't moved in a long time, their wheels sinking into the mud and foliage coating their axles. You can tell that these buses are like a kind of town services and through cities at one point and you've got big coaches like these two so they'll be all different inside this one's nice and accessible again oh wow you can smell the decay in here these seats will definitely hold a lot of mould see all the seats have been piled up back here or taken out. Toilets at the rear of the bus, I'm normally used to them being kind of in the middle where that door is but this one's got the door at the back. Besides these coaches, most of the buses collected were old, dating back to the 70s and 80s. It didn't seem like the owner had a specific type and was choosing quantity over quality in the gathering process. This one looks like it's been converted. There's no seats at all, there's a load of shelves. Even insulation on the floor that I'm walking over now. So this definitely was a home of some sort. Just kept some of the original details of the bus. Just kind of cool. 
I've just seen these labels on these bookcases. So perhaps this acted as a library or was in was an installation somewhere. I didn't see any clues on the outside walking in, so I'll have to go back and take a look. I found this on the uh, back side of it. Must have missed it coming in. As you can see, it's a county library service, which explains the interior. I wonder if this company's still running. That pile of scrap there. See tires on it, some chairs, all buses. This place used to be a lot larger and the collection was huge. But very recently they've decided to scrap them. I think they're all going. Really sad. This boat's been completely torched. Look at the state of the metal in there. It's all twisted. There's nothing left. Can't even tell which one this would have been. In fact, look, judging by the roof and the windows, I think this would have been one of the city services or city service type buses. There is hardly any information available regarding the history of the collection, but scanning the web and matching what we found with satellite images, we could see that it opened to the public from 2004, specialising in unrestored buses, and grew in size over the next few years. By 2008, the owner claimed that, with over 350 buses, he had the largest transport museum in Europe, and possibly the world. In 2011, the number was well over 400. However, since then, the pride seemed to dwindle. You can see how the bus abundant landscape starts to lessen and bigger gaps start to arise. But why? Again, there isn't a great load of fact we can find. Supposedly the owner was an elusive man who had multiple run-ins with the law. His methods of vehicle preservation weren't admired in the community, as it appeared he would only accumulate buses if they had scrap parts he required to restore others, no matter how rare or old they were, and wouldn't look after them like they needed to be as relics. As well as him falling into bankruptcy, that probably finalised the closure of the museum. During its activity, the collection suffered from local vandalism due to its isolated position and open grounds. Most of the buses have been smashed up for years, and perhaps it got a little too much to regulate their conditions. These ones are all city buses. You can see that the seats are all intact inside, but in different variations. Then you come through into this section, where there are some different vehicles here. There's four or five fire engines. It's really interesting. I don't think I've ever seen an abandoned fire engine before. This one as well, it's from the Civil Defence Department. The four different fire engines and the Irish Civil Defence truck were especially interesting and looked very old fashioned. If you have any clue about any vehicle seen in this video, be sure to leave a comment down below, as we would love to learn more. See inside the fire engine? There's pine trees coming down down there. Some more seats for firemen here. You could fit six, maybe seven. Head inside one of these school buses. Wow, it's really cool to be honest. The vines creeping in through the gaps in the smashed windows. See where scrappers have took this off to take valuables. 
Really interesting place, I've not really seen anything like it. Inside the city buses, it was a peaceful break from the wind. We were left to wonder how long ago it was when these seats were full of passengers and where were they headed. The signs and adverts still hanging up indicated that the fleet would have driven around Dublin, so we can assume that they are outdated in comparison to the capital's bus service nowadays. to the second half of buses. That's a lot more down here. Yeah, Look at this huge sightseeing one with the open top. Yeah. There's another one in that corner over there. There's a lot, but there was so much more. Look. Yeah, you can see all the scrapping. Yeah. That's crazy, they would have all been lined up. And you can see what's happening to this one. The front's been all mashed up. Such a shame. Got to go inside this one. Still got the map of where it would go in Dublin. The foliage as well. Everything appears really green. Just to make sure it's not gonna tip over when I go in. Wow. The roof's collapsing. Go up to the top. Oh my god. This one's really dangerous to be honest. The seats have collapsed. The top deck of that one that has lost its front is still in really good condition, amazingly. Down a hill, we found ourselves facing even more derelict buses, with a towering backdrop of pine trees. Although half of the assembly had been lost to demolition, in some cases, the vehicles that were half shredded were intriguing us, as we got to see them in a totally unique way. It felt as if this area of the museum hosted the buses that were too far gone, as there was a considerable difference in deterioration between the others at the summit of the hill. Restoration looked to have never been attempted for any of these, leaving them to be squashed into the space and neglected. It's like navigating a maze. There's little passages between each bus. This one's quite a big one. Never seen this sort of stop button before. Quite satisfying to press there. See if any of these bosses differ. 
for the first set that we looked at. Oh, this is actually quite nice. It's really destroyed, but the a lot more decay in here and natural growth. The last thing to do was to check out the rubble at the far end of the graveyard. This is the after effects. A very unfortunate end of the story for the buses. So many have been lost already. And it seems that the outcome will be the same for all of them. And this little wasteland will soon just become scrap metal bus parts. Even though personally I'm not a vehicle expert, it does seem like a massive shame that in a few years it's unlikely that any of the buses will remain. Some of them are very dated and have become artefacts of the past due to our constantly modernising, efficiency focused society. However, these relics will vanish soon enough, and maybe when the scrap metal is cleared and the grass grows back, the satellite view of the graveyard will return to how it was prior to the museum's period an empty field, as if the whole ordeal never happened. Still, it was a fascinating experience, and one that strayed from the norm of our explorations. At least we were able to document some of these vehicles in their final stages, despite it being too late to save them. Here are some of our photographs captured from the abandoned bus graveyard. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description, where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. It was great to see amazing support on the Debenhams video, and we are really glad you liked it. Thank you for 82,000 subscribers as well. See you next time.